Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College's Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is ET113, and we are discussing AC power. In this, this chapter, we're going to be discussing resistive circuits. Okay, uh, last chapter, last video, uh, we came up with this really easy formula to use right here, where P of T is equal to VRMS, IRMS, cosine theta, which we knew was basically a constant. And it's minus VRMS, IRMS, cosine theta, cosine 2 times 2 pi FT, which is our first time varying. And it is plus VRMS, IRMS, sine theta, sine 2 times 2 pi F of T, which is our second time varying. Time variant two and one. Okay, we're going to go ahead and use this formula um, using a purely resistive circuit. So let's go ahead and draw our purely resistive circuit where here's our resistor and it's got a V of T of that polarity and it's got current going through this in direction, time varying I of T going that direction. Okay, so forget the math. I know this thing up here looks super complicated right now. Let's just think about it in these terms, how V of T and I of T relate. So let's go ahead and draw those things out. And there we go. It looks like V of T and I of T are in phase for a resistive circuit. Okay, so let's describe a couple things about this. First off is this first half of the cycle. Voltage is up in the positive region, as is current. So what we've got, first half of the cycle, it looks like the resistor has plus minus voltage, and it's got current going in this direction. The current starts off here at zero, but it increases, reaches its maximum, at the same time the voltage reaches its maximum and goes down to zero. Okay. Now, second half of the cycle, current switches, so here's second half, direction because the polarity of the voltage switches, okay? So does that mean that there's negative power? No, it means the fact that current is just going in the opposite direction. So it's going from zero back down to negative. It's reaching its maximum negative. At the same time, voltage is going down. It's reaching its maximum voltage negative and going this way. This right here means it's still it's still dissipating power. You know, current is still going in this direction, and it's still dissipating power. So it's not negative power. It's the fact that this is a negative value times a negative value, and we know negative times a negative equals positive. Okay, so that's positive power. Okay, there's another thing I want to draw your attention to these areas when current and voltage are zero. So there's a third thing that we can talk about here. So third point, or points as the case may be, there are regions when power is equal to zero. Okay, so using what we know, and what we know, what do we know? We know that positive times a positive equals a positive. A negative times a negative is equal to a positive. We additionally know that the sine function of something, whatever it may be, times the sine of something is equal to some other form of a sine wave. Okay? So we know we don't we don't have to worry about what's inside the box here or inside the circle. Sine times a sine is equal to sine with something else in the box, okay? So we would expect, let's go ahead and draw what we expect here. So power, we know that there's regions of zero power. Those regions of zero power happen to coincide when current, which I'm drawing as this dotted line, happens to be zero at the same time voltage 
happens to be 0. We additionally know that it's a positive times positive here. So in this region, we should have positive power. So in this region, it's a negative times a negative. So we should also have positive power. So what does it look like? We could surmise. And also, additionally, we knowing that a sine times a sine is equal to some other form of a sine, we could expect it would have a very sinusoidal nature and be entirely positive. OK? So there's three things we want to draw uh, attention to about the power curve that we just drew here using pretty limited math. We're going to go back up and use this giant formula right here. But we right now are concerning ourselves. What does this power curve look like? First off, it's centered about some average. What did I just do there? Let's redraw that line. It's centered about some average power right here. There's a power maximum. There's a power minimum, which so happens to be 0, which it crosses here, here, and here. And if we keep our current and our uh, voltage in the background there, we notice that it's crossing the the zero, excuse me, touching the uh, touching the zero axis one, two, three times, whereas the uh, the uh, current and voltage. Uh, how to describe this? Okay, easier way to describe this. It's going through its cycle twice. See how in the background voltage and current are going through its cycle once. Voltage rises, goes through zero, drops to negative, and comes back to zero. Look at what power is doing. It's going from zero back up to its maximum, down to zero. It's through one cycle, and it's going up to its maximum and back down to zero. So it's going through two cycles. So there's the first thing we drew attention to was the power average. There's some power average. Two, there's some power maximum. Three, at their point reaches a power of zero. And four, it's twice the frequency of the voltage and the current. OK? Now let's go ahead and use that giant formula from up top there. OK, we've got our constant, our time varying one, and our time varying two. OK, remember that theta in all of these circumstances is how much voltage leads or lags the current. And if we remember right, in our purely resistive circuit, we've got something like this, where voltage peaks and current simultaneously peaks. So there is no phase shift between voltage and current in a purely resistive load. So our theta is equal to 0 degrees. Okay. Using what we know about cosine and sine, so let's draw cosine and sine. And there we go. We know that cosine starts at 1, goes to 0 at 90 degrees, is at negative 1 at 180 degrees, is 0 at 270 degrees, and it's back up to 1 at 360 degrees. OK, for sine, it starts at 0, goes up to a maximum of 1, at 90 degrees, goes down through 0 at 180, meets a minimum of negative 1 at 270 degrees, and it's back to 0 at 360 degrees. So we've got cosine theta equals 0. OK, so cosine theta when cosine 0, what is that? 0 degrees, it's right here, it's 1. So we know that sine of 0 in this case, sine of phase shift 0, is going to be right here. Sine of 0 is 0. Okay, So this is going to go ahead and seriously simplify what's going on in this giant equation up here. Okay, So let's go ahead and substitute cosine 0 equals 1 and sine 0 equals 0. Okay, Let's go ahead and simplify this equation right here. 